الحمد لله صلى الله وسلم على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه بارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا بعد uh, welcome everyone inshallah to our official um, seminar or workshop inshallah we're going to be as brief as possible um, but the whole purpose of this meeting is actually to get to know the brothers and the sisters could also uh, get to get uh, to know each other downstairs but also uh, maybe looking at the holistic um, picture of Hajj and everyone is nervous it's, it's an online platform we probably haven't met the uh, uh, our providers even though you are interacting with us and uh, all your concerns are always uh, communicated to the providers uh, but I think this session is very important for us as we know that there are only a few more days left before we embark on this important uh, journey, inshallah. So just uh, I thought of maybe going through just a few verses uh, of Hajj before we, we commence, inshallah. I will say the uh, verses are from Surah Al-Hajj itself. I think it's, I'll take, give you the reference uh, from Ayah 26. Uh, maybe we'll do three four verses. <laughs> أدلا تشرك بي شيئا وطيب بيتي للطائفين والقائمين والركع السجود وأذن في الناس بالحج يأتوك رجالا وعلى كل ضامر يأتين من كل فج عميق ليشهدوا منافع لهم ويذكروا اسم الله في أيام معلومات على ما رزقهم من بهيمة الأنعام فكلوا منها وأطعموا البائس الفقير ثم ليقضوا تفثهم وليوفوا نذورهم وليطوفوا بالبيت العتيق ذلك ومن يعظم حرمات الله فهو خير له عند ربه وأحلت لكم الأنعام إلا ما يتلى عليكم فاجتنبوا الرجس من الأوثان واجتنبوا قول الزور أنفاء لله غير مشركين به وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَكَأَنَّمَا خَرَّ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَكَأَنَّمَا خَرَّ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَتَخْطَفُهُ الطَّيْرُ أَوْ تَهْوِي بِهِ الرِّيحُ فِي مَكَانٍ سَحِيقٍ ذلك ومن يعظم شعائر الله فإنها فإنها من تقوى القلوب. صدق الله العظيم. So we understand these are the verses from Surah Al Hajj as I've mentioned from Ayah 26. Inshallah, you can refer to them. Very important verses that speaks about the journey that we are about to undertake. Inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify, rectify our intentions. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard all of us on this journey, inshallah. Take us safely and bring us all back safely. Without any further ado, I know we had a little bit of technical issues, mashallah. I think uh, uh, Brother Mubashir on a Sunday, he plays cricket, but he said, look, also, I'm not going on Hajj, but I want to reap the reward of the Hujjaj, particularly those who are online. Um, and 
we uh, thank everyone for making this time as well uh, for us that are parents, those of you that are working. Uh, Sunday is a very important day. But as promised, inshallah, I'm going to be as brief as possible. So very quickly, inshallah, there are some brothers waiting or some people waiting in the... Oh, okay. Sure. No problem, inshallah. We're just going to make the brother, one of the brothers, a co-host. Can you do it, brother? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Hajj. Why Hajj? And why are we here? Why are we here? It's because someone can answer the question. We know why we are here. One of the pillars of Islam, alhamdulillah. One of the pillars of Islam. And I'm not going to go into things that we know already. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, in fact, is speak about, initially, about what is required for us to do prior our trip. Those of you that have gone for Umrah, you probably have some experiences, but you know Hajj is one of the most unique rituals, other than your Salah. Salah is performed on a daily basis, we all know how to perform Salah. The other day I went to lead the uh, Eid prayers because you know, your takbirah is something that is done uh, once or twice a year. You get confused. The same thing happens when you go for hajj. You may get confused. And this is why it's always important to have uh, someone with you that may remind you those uh, that were trained, for example. And this is what Sahaba Rudwanullah did. They waited for Nabi Sallallahu in Medina. And Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, before his hajj, he announced. There was a public announcement. People could have gone for Hajj, but they waited for Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when they knew that he was undertaking Hajj in that particular year, the ninth year of migration, they all accompanied the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam. How many Sahaba performed Hajj with him? 100,000. 100,000. Why? Here scholars speak, scholars speak that because they wanted to have a mentor, they wanted to have a spiritual guide. So it's always you will notice. Sometimes you get stuck. You want to cl clarify. There's time difference. You can't get uh, your favorite or people, you know, scholars that you normally talk to. So you need someone who is who is there with you. There are four people waiting in the waiting room, please. Uh, okay, sure. I've just admitted that. So this is why it's 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 important for us to have that connection. But before that connection. It is important for us to have a clear mindset before we go for Hajj. Mindset is always important. They speak about having a, an aim in mind. And this sometimes on a trip of Hajj, you may lose it. Because you'll be tempted, you'll be tested, your patience will be put on a, on a trial. And for you, in order to control yourself, you always go back to, you, to your mindset. Your mindset, your conscience will always put you back on your track. So for example, if you are, you're landing in Medina or Jidda, it doesn't matter, but it's going to be a very hectic trip for you. You'll be there, you're tired, you had a 14, 14 hour or even more hours of transit, and you get there, you are put on a waiting a waiting room, for example, or you're standing on a queue. Sometimes there's no chairs at all. How do you control your, your calmness and your emotions? Someone comes to probably provoke you for that matter. They ask you unnecessary questions. How, how do you deal with that? The food is delayed, for example. So having a clear mindset, that is what the Quran speaks about. What does the word do? When you have that pre um, uh, consultation and you are fully prepared for your trip not only physically but mentally and spiritually you will find yourself to become while everyone else is restless so this is point number one and i had i was in hajj just before covid 
we had one youngster, beautiful guy, mashallah. I'm not going to mention his name. And we had Mina tents. So he lost his calmness because, uh, you know, there's no luxuries there. I mean, we're not looking for luxuries. Uh, look, what luxuries does the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have? You can have your five-star hotel. You can have your uh, Majarul Kapsh tent, the VIP tent. But you're going to go through some inconveniences because the trip of Hajj is not a luxurious trip. You are basically, you are basically following the footsteps of, of uh, al Nabi alayhi salam and the previous previous prophets. So how can that trip be an easy one? Uh, you know, al Jannah bil Makari. Nabi sallallahu tells us that Jannah is surrounded by hardships, obstacles. You need to cross through those obstacles. It's not going to be an easy easy one. Uh, look, we're not saying that the providers are not trying their best to give us best experience. They are. But with that, regardless of all the preparation that the providers are doing, you're going to go through some challenges. You're not in your comfort zone. You're out of your comfort zone. So what will keep you steadfast is the you looking at the footsteps of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was difficult for him. He had to separate with his wife. Aisha radiallahu anha and many uh, those who accompanied him on this trip, he's counseled his wives. So there was a separation there. So sometimes maybe you might not be given a room where you have to share with your wife. Even the preference is there. They are facilitating, they're asking people to upgrade. But if it's not done, it's not the end of the world. If your food is delayed, uh, look, what food did... Sahaba have, even the pious predecessors, we've seen people walking up till now, you'll see people that are walking while you are in, in a five-star bus with ACs and everything. You'll see people sleeping outside. When I look at those people, I tell myself I have nothing to complain about. If this guy, if this sister, if this brother can go in that intense heat of Arabia, it's, it's going to be hot anyway, it's summer, you're looking at what I'm not scaring anyone, but it's going to be very hot. And you're seeing people that are sacrificing. And I look at myself, there's no difference between me and we all here to seek for Jannah. So the verses that we just recited, we need to go back to Surah Al Hajj, Ayah 26 downwards. Look at those meanings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, put, puts across to us before we embark in this journey. Why am I going there? I'm not going there for holidays. I am not going there to go and make friendship. I'm not going there to go and talk to people. It's allowed to talk to people. Neither am I going there to become a celebrity or a star. I just want to post everything on the social media. I'm going there to have my quality time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person has this mindset, they will enjoy the trip. Well, I saw this boy smashing, vandalizing the tents in Mina because he was frustrated. He goes, started kicking everything around. And those are temporary uh, walls, right? And they started falling apart. So I went and grabbed him. I said, look, you want to fight someone? Fight with me. But why are you kicking this, this, uh, uh, this, this tents? Oh, because... This, uh, uh, the agent did this, they, and I said, look, the agent is a human being, he's not, you're feeling the pain now. And this is happening where? In Mina. And we saw others, very patient, so the mindset and mindset. Uh, why am I not, why, Mubashi, why can't I move this? Uh, okay. Look at the merits of Hajj. First hadith and second hadith that is displayed on, I can't display, uh, I cannot display, I cannot share this. Okay, okay, wait, 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 sorry. So I think I have to do two things, yeah, sorry. So these two hadith that are in front of us, number one, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the hajj mabrur, 
الحج المبرور ليس له الجزاء إلا الجنة بخاري أن مسلم The Hajj that is مبرور and that is the word that we are looking for Hajj مبرور means an accepted Hajj There is no any other reward no monetary reward for it You can never find something that is equivalent to the reward of that Hajj المبرور the accepted Hajj Except for what? For Jannah. You know, for me, who love to understand the hadith, I look at it. In my entire life, I am only allocating two to three weeks. I'm going to spend these three weeks purely according to what the Quran and the Sunnah wants me. And three weeks when I return home, what do I have with me? What do I have with me? What do I have with me? Spiritual. What do I have? According to the hadith. Zero sins. Zero sins. According to this hadith. Hajj Mabrur. According to this hadith. Jannah. Excellent. Jannah. Excellent. Jannah. Sahaba gave their lives to get the Jannah. Allah is giving me the same Jannah. Just purely giving Allah three weeks of my life. Whoever performs Hajj, man Hajj, walam yarfu, walam yafsuk, walam yafsuk. According to the Hadith, as I said, raja yomi waladathu ummu. Whoever performs Hajj and does not commit any act of indecency, does not rebuke anyone, does not insult someone, you come back as a newborn baby. So these two hadith are motivating for me. So no matter what happens, I'm going to look at these two hadith. Jannah, sinless. I'll, be, I'll return home sinless, and Jannah is calling me. Moving forward, we spoke about mental and spiritual preparation. Sincerity, number one. Then you need patience, right? Uh, of course, repentance. You need to repent before your hajj because you're coming back fresh. Then, of course, you need your patience, as you all know. If you have any problems with someone, a family member, you settle all your disputes, you owe someone money, uh, just mention to them, I'm going on hajj, please do forgive me. Uh, make some arrangements. Could be relatives as well, could be friends. If you need to write... Oh, sorry. If you need to write a... I'm just playing out a bit. Okay, I think it's slow. My hands are a bit fast. Uh, okay. And the, the back. Just press mouse and I think it's something happening. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> That's a tough one. Okay. Uh, we'll leave it there. I, I, I can share the slides with you later. Uh, if you need to write to your will, you know, do so before you go for Hajj. It's something that is recommendable. Uh, we have spoke about due payments when you're traveling. You know someone that is just chit-chatting. We, we don't want to cut anyone out, but we will minimize our talk. So companionship and... Your expense for Hajj should always be lawful because in Allah Tayyib la yaqbalu illa Tayyiba. You can't go and take a loan and then you're going for Hajj. The bank loans and all those things. Uh, and that's a dis scholars have spoken about that. Uh, you have to have the knowledge of what you're going to do because فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ You first need to know who Allah is. You, know, you need to know how to pray. You need to know how to perform Hajj, how to perform Umrah before you engage into that act of worship. So understanding the ritual itself, and this is what we are doing, there will be some du'as, must know du'as, right? Learn them what to say, uh, you know, when you're making tawaf, for example, like uh, this, you know, all those important du'as. You need to, so mental and spiritual prepar preparation is something that is highly recommendable.
Okay. Uh, what to take with us? Think. There's one sister, mashallah, may Allah reward her. Was it a sister or a brother that shared? Uh, I think. Oh, this is not going to change again. Yeah, alhamdulillah, it's not changing. That shared a list, a whole list of what to take. It was good, mashallah, but we don't want to be heavy when we're traveling. Try to travel lighter. I uh, people sometimes they want to take all you know nice meals and snacks and take some snacks that's fine, but this is very very important. Those of you that have been for Umrah, you will know. You know I had some youngsters going for Umrah and they are at the last connection connection point, and they're calling me. Oh, we packed our ihram in our check in luggage. What are we gonna do? We only have. Half an hour before we board. I'm like, okay. Is this your first time? Yes, it is. So make sure when you're packing, especially for us brothers, uh, okay, alhamdulillah, we're going via Medina. We're going to Medina first. But if you are going to Makkah first and your ihram is not with you, then you're in trouble. Okay? So make sure, inshallah, the ihram will be given, as we have mentioned. It will be given by uh, Ruwaf Mina. And uh, I assume we all have sent our requests, right? If we haven't, there's still time, inshallah, send them an email. Uh, if, you have, if you are with other providers, that's fine. You can contact the providers. I don't know what is the arrangements with the other providers. Uh, but make sure you have your sandal, your thongs, and uh, if, if you need to change your haram, you can always buy another haram in, in, in Medina as well. If you go into Medina first, uh, and there will be a need for you to change your haram because, uh, as you're going to see um, shortly, if you're on medication, if you're on medication, two things. If you can't get enough medication, at least get your prescriptions. Okay? And it's always important to have both prescriptions and medication because anything can happen. Your luggage can go missing. You can displace or rather misplace your... Um, your, your uh, medication or something can happen. So you need to have your prescription so you can purchase it over there. Sleeping bag. Why sleeping bag? Because in Muzdalifa is we're going to look. So, so you need to have your sleeping bag with you. I don't think the providers are providing this. Um, uh, and all those other things that you can see there, inshallah. Uh, let's move forward. Okay. Uh, now, we're starting with with the understanding of, of Hajj now. So you know that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have allocated five points. Whomsoever crosses, whoever crosses through these five points, any of these five points for intention of Hajj or Umrah, they need to declare the intentions. What do we call these places? These are known as Miqat, right? So, you can see there that the, all the five points are there. I've highlighted um, the points. There is Dul uh, Hulayfa, there is, you know, Yaramlam, uh, Manazil, and Qarn al Manazil, and all those places. So, Dul Hulayfa is the one that we're going to use. And that is the Miqad, the boundary of the people in Medina. And there was a point where Nabi went and declared his intention for Umrah in Hudaybiyah, during Hudaybiyah, as well as, as Hajj. Um, now, what happens here? What happens when you get there? Uh, let me show that we have correct this mouse. It's actually... Uh, okay, yeah. When you get at the boundary, at the Miqat, it's important for you... Uh, to ensure that you are in, in a state of ihram. What do we mean by the state of ihram? Does it only mean having the ihram itself? I've brought the pair of ihram here as well. Does it mean just having the pair of ihram itself? No. There are a few things that we need to do in order for us to fulfill the criteria of ihram. Some of it, it's sunnah, okay? But some of it, some of it are mandatory things you cannot get away from uh, away of it so number one you make sure that you trim you trim your nails and you know look 
presentable and hygiene and you know all the shaving that you know trying to be modest uh you know whether it's armpits and all those things you do that before you before you declare your intention before you come to to the boundary taking a bath it is also sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Praying two rakats at the boundary, it is also the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you cannot do this, it's not going to affect your, your ihram. Uh, just mental notes, please. Uh, questions at the end. What is necessary for you? When you reach there, you're not going to have, for us males, we're not going to be wearing any stitch clothes. So we're going to get rid of our clothes and we should have our ihram on. People make mistakes of having, I'll have to say this, sisters please forgive me, but I have to say this. Uh, you cannot have your underwears. It is not allowed. You can't have your underwear for, for, for the males. So it's purely your ihram. Don't worry about the rest. We'll show you how to keep it fastened, inshallah. And this is number one. So you have your thongs with you, not shoes, and no stitched clothes, and you have your two pieces of ihram on you, number one. Number two, you make the talbiyah. You make the talbiyah. Labbaik Allahumma. Is it Labbaik Allahumma what? Are we, are we doing hajj now or umrah? Okay, we'll mention that. The bake Allahumma Umrah. If you are doing what is Hajj Tamattu, if you are doing Quran, the bake Allahumma Hajjan wa Umrah. I will explain that you don't get confused. We are, we're going to do Umrah first, then Hajj second. So as we cross at the boundary of Iramlam in Medina, we will stop the bus unless if you're going by train, then it's, it's a different story. But if you're going by bus, normally they stop. You go make your udu. You can offer two rakats in the at the masjid that is uh, that is located there, right? So at that point, you have to say the bayk Allahumma umrah. If you miss that, you're in trouble. If you miss that, you're in trouble. According. To authentic opinion, if a person misses the niqaat and do not fulfill this condition, they have to come back. You have to come back, okay? Uh, what if you obstructed? Then that is another issue, and uh, this we may discuss that later. But we we don't want to give the loopholes now. Okay, moving forward. So what have we learned so far? Point number one: having a haram, and you know what is what is a haram. Um, and where to have the ihram. Okay. Now, we have our ihram on. What do we do from this time onwards? We make the talbiyah. Okay? We make the talbiyah. Labbayk Allahumma labbayk. Labbayk la sharika laka labbayk. Ilma alhamda wal na'mata laka wal mulk. La sharika laka. You keep on saying this. You may speak. You may speak to someone. You may eat. But this will be moisture on your tongue. Until you enter masjidul. Haram. What we said, we're performing Umrah first. So our Hajj is Hajj Tamattu'ah. Okay? There are three types of, of Hajj. Okay, but let's just focus on this for a moment. You enter your hotel from Medina now. You're in, in Mecca. You're going to go to your hotel. You may refresh. If you want to take a bath, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took a bath when he entered, he entered um, uh, Mecca. Okay, because that was his original residence. And this refreshes you. But however, you need to abstain from the things that we will mention very shortly. What you need to abstain at the state of the haram. So for example, applying perfume and all those things. Can you use uh, a soap that has fragrance? It's debatable among scholars. Majority of them have given the concession. You can use soap, shampoo and all those things. Because they their opinion is that the scent there is not an original perfume okay the problem is using the original perfume uh, i just want to be uh out of this um confusion i don't want to have any you know bad thoughts so i will abstain from it that's also fine now 
you continue with the hotel beer at the hotel. Now, it's time to go and make your umrah. The moment you step your foot in the Masjid al-Haram, you discontinue with your talbiyah. No more talbiyah at this point. When do you discontinue? The moment you are entering where? Masjid al-Haram. Brother, I think you can uh, translate for that. I see you taking notes, mashallah. Right. Um, now you enter. Are you going to start with Tahiyatul Masjid there? According to the correct opinion of scholars, no, for you, your intention of coming to Masjid al-Haram is not for Salah. It's for Umrah. So you go and look, locate the Kaaba first. Go and look where the Kaaba is. Inshallah, we'll guide you there some. You, most of you have been there, of course. Um, so we'll go there. Unless if you are entering there and it's time for prayers, then prayers will will uh, succeed everything. You have to discontinue and just pray with everyone else. But you you are there at 10 a.m. or maybe 3 p.m. Then you go and start with you with your umrah. Okay. Um, let's go now. We will do a, a small demonstration of how to uh, wear ihram later. Okay, but I want you to, to take note of what I'm saying now. When you wear your ihram, you will expose your right arm. al tiba is known. Okay, your right arm will be exposed. And uh, inshallah, we'll, we will do this together so that we... We are all able to, yeah, so it's, it's going to look like this, okay? Yeah. This, you'll have your arm exposed in the first three rounds of your tawaf. First three circuits, you will expose your right arm, number one. Number two, as you're making tawaf, it is also sunnah for you to have what is known as rami, your kind of joke. It's going to be overcrowded. Who can do it? So you, you can pretend uh, jogging on the same on the same uh, position. Uh, this is what majority of people would do. Um, I don't know why this is really getting stuck. Okay. So exposing our right arm and also jogging in the first three. The the fourth one, you. Cover your right arm and you walk a normal pace. Yeah, I hope that is clear, inshallah. So this was related to, to, to the um, uh, ihram, right? We haven't looked at what nullifies the ihram and the prohibition yet. We're going to look into that. But how do we start the tawaf itself? So when you enter, you will look for the green light. The green light indicates what? black stone so you look for the black stone and there is a light parallel to the black stone the moment you see that that's where your tawaf will commence yes we're going to be in a group but sometimes people can you know get confused uh, someone stays back oh then what am i going to do inshallah we'll try to to look for you but if you are there by any chance and you are performing by yourself you make sure that you look for, for the uh, black stone. And when you get there, the first thing that you do before you commence with your tawaf is lifting up your hand, facing towards the, towards the black stone and saying what? The first one, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, in the first one. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. It was the sunnah of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he would always say Bismillah before he does anything. Then you add the Lafdul Jalala, Allahu Akbar. Then you commence. Then you commence with your tawaf. What do you say when you're making tawaf? You can make your du'as. You can read Quran. Oh, right? Can you speak to someone? Yes, you can. But not worldly matters. So not worldly talks, right? Something that is, this is important. Yeah. 
Um, now, okay. So that's a black stone that you can see there, and we all can see. So we have started with our tawaf. They take note of the corners. You can see the, the semicircle, right? The semicircle is called, it has two names. Okay, Hatim or Hajar Ismail. All those are very linguistic names. They are historical too. So that semicircle is considered to be part of the Kaaba and no one is allowed to pass through there. There is a door in between the Kaaba and the semicircle. Okay. Sometimes that, that door is open. So can you go through there? No, you're not allowed. Why? Because it's considered to be making tawaf inside the Kaaba. This is part of the Kaaba. It has its history why it's part of the Kaaba. Inshallah, we'll mention it to you once we get there, Inshallah. So you make sure that you are also walking around the same circle when you're making your tawaf. Okay. So from the from the black stone, there is a door. That door, we'll speak about it as again, and Multazim, we'll speak about it not now, when we get there, Inshallah. Then you have the second corner there. Then you get the third corner. Where is the third corner? Where the semicircle ends, right? That is a Yemeni corner, Ruknul Yaman, okay? It is Sunnah for a person to touch it. When you touch it, Allahu Akbar, okay? But if you cannot get there, which is almost impossible to get there, unless if you want to go and fight with someone, a uh, little bit of muscles, don't go stretch your muscles there. You're not the right time. We, may, we don't want to lose anyone there. Uh, some boys came with me last, last Umrah, and they're not yet. Same one boy just walked away. Um, he would have told us a story. So there's no any chances of you touching that Yemeni corner, neither uh, the black stone itself. So at the black stone, we point. What about Rukn Yaman, the Yemeni corner? Do we point out? Do we wave at it? No, you don't. There's not any indication that you make towards the, uh, towards the Yemeni corner. The indication and uh, lifting up your hand and waving is only at the black stone. Now, from the third corner to the fourth corner, that place, that is the uh, corner uh, just before the black stone. Am I correct? What do you say there? If you are making any du'as, the moment you get there and you start crossing the last portion before you get to the black stone, just continue with your du'as that you're making and you make one particular du'a. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi l'akhirat hasana wa qina adhaab al -nar. In that way, you have completed your tawaf According to the Sunnah of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Fudu Anni Mana Sikakum, like he have said that perform your, your rituals in the same manner that I have demonstrated to you. And you do the third and the rest of them the same way. In the seventh one, then you go to Maqamu Ibrahim. Okay. Just trying to get the slides quickly. The station of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim musalla. And you go and perform two rakats behind there. You will see people kissing it, hugging it, you know, rubbing the clothes and all. Just laugh. At them. Sometimes I laugh at them and, and walk, walk away. What you are expected to do there is just two rakats. In the first rakat, you recite Surah Al Fatiha in Surah Al. Kafirun. Second raka, Suratul Fatiha and Suratul Ikhlas. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Okay, now you're done with your tawaf. Very easy, mashallah. Don't need to be here. Your brothers know everything, mashallah. Then from there, you go and drink Zam Zam. It is also Sunnah. Why? Because it's refreshing. And you know the hadith, there's no time to go into much details. And from there now, you go and do your Sai. And Sai, very important, 
you're walking a, a small distance of walk. And the moment you get closer to side, that's when now you should be vigilant and alert. We mentioned about, you know, the mental and physical or physical and spiritual preparation that you need to learn some du'as. So this, there are two, about three du'as there that you need to learn. Number one is the ayah of, of Umrah. Inna safa wal marwa min sha'airillah. Faman hajj al bayta You all know the ayah, right? You may, I'll share a, a small uh, PDF, which is, I think, about six, five, six pages. It has all these uh, steps, inshallah. So as you walk towards Mount Safa, then you start with the ayah as you walk. So what do we mean by that? I can see Mount Safa in front of me. I'm starting to climb on it. I'm ascending on Mount Safa. That's when I start reading the ayah. So you, there is something that you need to say before. Abda'u bima bada Allahu bi. Then you bring the ayah in the safa until the end of the, the ayah. Then there is a third, there is something that you need to say. And that is the dua. La ilaha illallah. Wahdahu la sharika la. Lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamdu. Wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. La ilaha illallah wahdah. Anjaza wa'dah wa nasara abadah. Wa hazamal ahzaba wahdah. Okay, short du'as, mashallah, you can memorize them. Uh, what else? So do I will record, maybe voice record, and I will share in the group. Uh, those of you, if you're not in a group, you can contact me privately. I will also share it with you, inshallah. Uh, see, when you do that, then you position yourself on Mount Safa. And you turn towards the Qibla. You don't just come there and start going towards uh, Marwa. No, no. You read the ayah, then you read the dua, then you stop, you turn towards the qibla and you make duas. You make duas. Five minutes, whatever time it is. Then you start walking towards marwa. As you walk towards marwa, you will see a green light above you. You will jog on there. Okay, there's history behind it, there's no time. You jog, and this is only for the Males. Do the sisters jog? No. The same thing, the rumble in the first three uh, circuits in Tawaf is only for males. Uh, so you might see some sisters doing it. Uh, just tell you, if you are traveling with the women folk, tell them, look, uh, inshallah, we can remind each other there. When you get to Marwa, you do the exact thing that you have done when you came to Safa. So, Abdaw bima bada Allah bi. Then the ayah in the Safa al Marwa bin Shahir illah man hajjal till the end. Then the la ilaha illallah. Then you stop there. Then you face the qibla. Then you make dua again. This only happens in the first, in the first visit, first presence. In the second, second time you just walk. Okay. So how do we count? How do we count our rounds from Safa to Marwa? One. Marwa to Safa. Two. Okay? So you start from Safa, you end at Marwa. Clear? Seven times. Then you are done. You are done. What do you do after this? You go and you go and shave. You go and shave. So very quickly, let's look at what nullifies Ihram. Prohibition of Ihram. So from the time that you uh, adorned your ihram at the miqat, from the miqat, the moment you have your ihram on, up till the completion of your sai, there are few things that you cannot do. What are they? You cannot cover your head as a man. Men cannot cover their head. Sisters, of course, they should. Can we carry an umbrella? Yes, it's allowed. Oh, we're not allowed to wear stitched clothes. Can we wear sunglasses? Yes, you can. Okay? You are not allowed to shave, trim, or unplug your hair. You cannot unplug your hair. You cannot even uh, bite you. You know, some people have got bad habits of biting the nails, right? Especially when they're stressed. You can't even do that. Um, 
no cutting of nails, no, no, not even biting, you cannot wear perfume, you cannot make nikah, okay? So making nikah, two things. For those who are married, meaning you cannot have conjugal rights. Those who are not married cannot perform nikah at the state of, you know, I have a sheikh on board, or marriage celebrant, you know, can, can you do something? No, no, there's not now. Okay, right. Uh, and the, you cannot hunt as well, right? You cannot hunt. Once you you cannot hunt at the state of, of haram, and when you enter at the territories of the haram, we'll speak about that. We're going to we're not going to speak about the venture of Makkah and Medina today, because of time. When we get there, inshallah, we will discuss in the buses and all those things. Uh, is this clear? So we're going back after side. Come yes. You can come here, Birk, of course. Um, how do we conclude our, our Umrah? Who can remind me? Shaving. That's right. Yeah. Shaving. Uh, sometimes, mashallah, we have boys with uh, long hair. Should I shave? Should I just trim? It's allowed to, to trim as well. But the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made double du'as for those who Shave and single for those who trim, but both are allowed, even though shaving is more encouraged and emphasized. While you're doing Hajj as well, so if you're coming in one before, is it it's safe shaving for the Hajj or you just shave? Can, can we leave the questions to the end, inshallah? So we, we, we in that way, we finish Kika, inshallah. Uh, I'm not trying to underestimate the question. It's a very important one. So we finished our Umrah. Now, very important. You will see some people there that come and you know, ask you to, to, to shave you at, on a spot. That's illegal in Saudi Arabia. You could be fined. You, could be, you don't want to go through those complications, right? So all the shaving should be done at the Baba for, for us. Uh, sisters, they know what to do. They So what is... Uh, according to Sunnah for them, they hold the, um, the age of the hair, they make a fist, and just a bit tiny hair that comes on the, on, on the fist, they cut it out. There's debatable uh, opinion among scholars now. Can a person shave themselves? Can a sister shave themselves? Uh, because you're not allowed to shave. You have completed your, your rituals now. So according to uh, Bimbaz and all of them, they have given a concession that sisters can shave themselves, can shave themselves. Or the one sister can go and shave the other and, and vice versa. That's, that's allowed. So in this manner, you have completed your, your uh, Umrah and now you come out of the state of Ihram. You can now wear your normal clothes, and start, you know, enjoying all those prohibitions. Okay. We're going to go to Hajj very quickly, inshallah. Very mindful of time. Uh, I'm just going to get the slides of, of Hajj. So if it's easier for all of us, bismillah. Okay. Yes. So if... Alhamdulillah. So as we have mentioned, the... Uh, Hajj has got four pillars. Number one, wearing a haram. Number two, standing at Arafah, Al Hajj Arafah. Tawafuli Fadha. Number three, Sa'i. And this Sa'i is for Mutamatia. Sa'i is for the one that comes there, performs Umrah, gets out of a state of the haram, waits until Hajj starts on the eighth day, Yawm Tarwiyah. For that person alone should have. When they go and make the awful father, they should have sa'i. We'll not explain that. For now, what I want me and everyone else to do is to understand the four pillars of, of Hajj. Number one, Ihram. Number two, what was number two? The Arafa. Number three, awful ifada. Number four, sa'i. Okay, when we speak about pillars in Islam, you all know. The fuqaha and jurists are very categorical on this. If you miss a pillar of salah, is the salah valid? No. 
For example, takbirat al-ihram, it's a pillar in salah. If you miss that, then your salah is not accepted. So missing any of these will invalidate a person's hajj. And we had some people that, mistakes may happen, okay? We had some people that went, you know, like even last year, some brothers went, they came back and they were like, oh, I didn't do properly, Father. I'm like, brother, you are still in a state of ihram here. Yeah, that means you can't be with your wife, you can't, so uh, things like that. Um, so ihram of hajj, it's something that we need, we need to understand because there can be a little bit of confusion. And what I like to advise myself and, and everyone else here, even when I was studying, uh, I went with, with this, uh, the imam and I just listened to the imam. Because, you know, there's, there's a little bit of schools of thought, difference of opinions. And for you to start shopping around, you will be confused. For me, if I go to the masjid and I find a, a Shafi imam, I'll pray behind him, inshallah, my salah is accepted. If I find a Hanafi imam, I pray behind him, alhamdulillah, Hanafi. And look, why must I go and shop around and confuse myself? So, your ihram, you will weigh your ihram from your hotels. When you, okay, from your hotel when you're going to Mina. Okay, on the eighth day. Why shouldn't you go to the miqat? Why shouldn't you go to the boundary? Because at that time, you are considered as a resident. Okay? And because you already came there with the intention of Umrah, and then you exit from Umrah, right? So you are in your dwelling, in your hotels, you just wear your ihram, and that's where you make your intention. You don't need to go. You, need, you don't need to go anywhere else. Standing, and from there, on the ninth day, you have to be at, at Arafah. What if I am sick? You know, something happened. If you miss the day of Arafah, then your hajj is incomplete. You have to come back and redo it. All those headache of Nusuk. You have to go through that headache again. <laughs> uh, we all know those headaches. Um, and then your Tawaf al will mention when it happens on the day of Eid and Sa'id. Very quickly, inshallah. Right. We mention here the three types of Hajj are there. al tamattu Al-Qiran, Wal-Ifrad. We're not going to go into that. We're making Tamattu. We just stick to Tamattu. Tamattu means Umrah and Hajj separate, correct? Okay. Now... Uh, yeah, we mentioned this. This is what we are doing, the common. Okay, we need to get to another slide. Ah, uh, It is. But I'm controlling it on uh, from... Uh, the no, it's the computer is connected down downstairs. Uh, but the computer is downstairs on this one. You get it? Okay. Uh, okay. Test. It's really testing our patience here. Uh, downstairs. In the uh, office downstairs, the brother was, oh, there it is, there it is, alhamdulillah. I told you it was just testing your patient. We're doing Hajj, so it's normal. Every time I stand, So maybe we need to get you stand. <laughs> okay, right. The eighth day of the Hijjah, it's a very important day. All right? Known as Yawm Tarwiyah on the eighth of the Hijjah, that's when we are going to leave all our hotels wherever we are, zone A, zone C, whatever, we are all going to go to, to Mina. What time do we leave? What time do we leave to Mina? You have to be there before, before Zawal, okay, before Dhuhr prayer. And when you are there, then you pray Dhuhr and Asr, Jama'ah. 
جماعت مقدمة وما آخر. أوكي. يمك جماعة ظهر العصر. يمك جماعة أو قصر. Let's let's see. What do we follow? Do you make jama of the hour and asr there? No. So you will you will shorten your prayers. Jama will be on the uh, then uh, ninth day, the following day. So on the eighth of the hijjah, you will shorten your prayers, but you will not combine them. Correct. So you pray dhuhr uh, at the time of dhuhr, of course, but shorten them to two, and as well as asr. The same will happen with the, with with Aisha. No, Maghrib is not shortened. With Aisha, okay. Are we on the same page? Alhamdulillah. So at Mina we shorten, but we don't combine. That's on the uh, Earth Day. Make sure you can make a note. Have an additional ihram with you there because you may leave your bags at the hotels and things like that. It's a headache for you to go back there. You have. Uh, sometimes they, they do block the, the uh, streets, you can't get your hotels. So whatever you need to take at that day, do, uh, you, you, know, you have a few days in Makkah as well, do all your packing right before the 8th. Okay. Uh, it says that you must be in the Haram before you go to Mina. That's what we just mentioned. Okay, let's move forward, inshallah. Hope this is not going to just... Right. On the ninth of, of, of the Hijjah, which day is this now? Arafa. The day of Arafah. You are going to leave the Mina tents after sunrise. After sunrise. And you have to be at uh, at Arafah, the plains of Arafah at, at what time? By noon. By noon you should be there. Not later than that. Okay? When you got when you get there, you pray dhuhr and and the asr, shorten and combine, okay? Shorten and combine. At the time of dhuhr or asr. At the time of dhuhr, excellent. Okay, there is a masjid there, Masjid Mamira. So you can go to the masjid if you want, but it's going to be very uh, crowded. Historical masjid. We don't want to go into those historical things now, but we'll mention to you later, inshallah. Right. So on the ninth of the Hijjah, the day of Arafah, everyone will head towards towards Arafat after sunrise. Now, ideally, after Fajr, if you like taking a nap, no nap on the day. You know, you, you know, uh, just make sure you have everything with you. Then start getting getting ready. When you get there. Your wukuf. Wukuf means now starting making dua. What time does the rituals and the, the Arafah itself start? It starts from what time? Who can remind us? From Duhr. Okay? From Duhr up till just before sun, sunset. That's why you should be engaged in your ibadah, in your dua. Okay? Um, You'll notice this Mount Arafah and people want to go there and, you know, like you, you, you can see how crowded it gets as well. There's no merits going there. There's no extra reward going onto that Mount uh, Arafah. You could get hurt. You could be pushed. A lot of accidents that happen there. Why going through that, all those troubles, if you're not going to get an extra reward? Kissing black stone, kissing black stone, all the... Previous sins gets wiped out. And the other hadith mentioned that the black stone will intercede as well. It will tell Allah who, on judgment day who came and kissed it. This authentic hadith. But when it's crowded, you're not encouraged to be there. Right? You're not encouraged. Now, this place, what reward are you getting? Going on that month? And you see people praying there and a lot of. So we you just need to be said. What is important that that day is for you? having that strong connection with Allah, thinking about how you'll stand before Allah, having seeing all these people in front in front of you. Make dua. Some people cannot make duas longer than five minutes. So what you do here, the tip is, 
not down you to us. Well, because we have heard people after they come back, oh, I should have made this to our Narada. No, them down. You can have your mobile phones now. You can make, uh, you know, take notes. That helps have a schedule as well. Because from Duhr up till after Asr is a long time. What are you going to do? Okay? So normally what you should do is have a little bit of, of rest when you get there. Rest does not mean sleep. You can eat a bit, uh, you know, take a break. Maybe after one hour, tell yourself from this time to this time, I'll read so much of Quran, I'll make istighfar, I'll make, uh, you know, du'as, and I'll switch over from this, and it works out. If you have the, the schedule in front of you, you won't feel the, the day, inshallah. So, when do you live there? When should you vacate Arafah? Just before Maghrib. Do you pray Maghrib day? Not at all. Your Maghrib will be prayed at Muzdalifah. Okay? Remember we put what to pack? We put a sleeping bag, right? So your sleeping bag is for Muzdalifah. So we're not yet at Muzdalifah. You leave just before sun, before sunset. And you go to Muzdalifah. Sometimes because of uh, congestion and all those things, it takes very long to get there. So you haven't prayed your Maghrib and you haven't prayed your Isha yet because you're going to combine those Salahs. Maghrib, three rakats, but Isha will be shortened. You make sure you get there before midnight. For any reason, if you are not there before midnight, pray whether in your bus or somewhere else. Okay? Because you cannot delay Isha longer than midnight. Correct? Then it becomes Qadha. Right. The important, one of the important du'as of the day, we're going a little bit back, one of the important du'as of the day of Arafah is what the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have taught us, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. He says, alayhi salam, khayru ma qultu ana wal nabiyyuna qabri la ilaha illallah wahdahu. He says on the day of Arafah, there is no better du'as that the Prophet himself has made or the previous Prophets other than this du'a. So you repeat this du'a over and over again. In Muzdalifa, you will be there from... Now, let's go to Muzdalifa now. We're not going there physically, but we're going to look at a slide here that speaks about Muzdalifa as well. Okay. It says things to avoid. Do not pray Maghrib in Arafah, but join it with Isha in Muzdalifa. In Arafah, avoid any dunya. While they talk, talk idle chit-chatting or political talks, do not cover their head while in Ihram. Do not hunt, shave, cut trees while in Ihram. Do not make special point of standing up. This is what we've just mentioned. So you avoid doing all those mistakes that many people make. Okay. Uh, why? This skipped. Yes. Oh. Yeah, for what? Do you want to stand up and get this sorted? Okay. Uh, is it there yet? No, it's okay. Okay, don't worry if it's not there. Uh, um, at Muzdalifa, all you're going to do there is Al Mabit. You're going to spend the night there. Okay? Take a little bit of rest. Don't go there and start making a bad at Muzdalifa. It doesn't work. <laughs> Zoom is changed, yeah, correct. Uh, on Zoom is changed? Okay, so this is Muzdalifa, yeah, on Zoom. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Al Mabit, supposed to be Al Mabit, so there's a problem there. There's no Qaf in Muzdalifa, it's Mabit. So please. Okay. Um, what you're going to do there, it's actually spending a night there. If you arrive there at midnight, just sleep. Have a little bit of energy. Why? Because the 10th day is the main day for you. It's a most hectic day. So what time do you leave there? You leave there before 
before sunrise. Okay, um, you arrive there by mid uh, midnight. Uh, if I don't, just what we have mentioned as well, um, that if if you don't pray your isha and all those things, make sure that you pray before midnight. So you will leave, depart Muzdalifa, uh, just time of of just before sunrise. Before sunrise, that's when you start departing. Where do you go to? You go to Mina. But at Muzdalifa as well, there is something very important that you have to do. You pick up your pebbles from there. So when you pick up your pebbles, the small stones that you will use on the day of, uh, of Eid from Muzdalifa. Okay, how many should you pick? You pick... So the nine... Seven, 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 so we have the... Oh, you can't see. So it says the 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. Yeah. Uh, you, you need the whole world to defeat shaitan, maybe. <laughs> um, maybe if someone can control this. Maybe it's allergic to my hand. <laughs> um, so you just go. So you pick up your pebbles from uh, Muzdalifa, right? So the, the healthiest thing to do is the moment you arrive there, the first thing is Go okay. Find yourself a spot. Go get your pebbles, and then you can rest. Okay, because if you don't, you'll be tired. You can forget, and all those things. Um, where are you going to now? You're going back to to Mina. Now let's go to tenth day. Can you go to tenth day, brother? No, the one before. Tenth day. Okay, tenth of the Hijjah. Uh, Yawun Nahr, the day of sacrifice. When everyone, the whole, you know, your families are having eat, uh, for you it's a hectic day on the day. So what happens on the day of eat? You go, you wait in your tents, you wait until your sacrificial animal is done. Okay, we'll tell you how to book your your uh, your. Uh, 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 and sacrificial animal so you'll be informed by text message that uh, your, uh, your your sacrificial animal is done okay but while while you are walking there you remember that you have your talbia with you right you remember that you have your talbia all the time and in uh, Mina, when you come back on the 10th day from Muzdalifa to Mina, you'll get day by sun uh, uh, just before uh, Zawal, okay? Then you pray your Dhuhr and Asr, shorten, not combine, okay? Not combine. And on that day, that's when you go and pelt your Jamarat. What time do you go and pelt the Jamarat in the morning? Okay? You arrive there. You go to your jamarat, you take your seven pebbles, and you only pelt the biggest jamarat. Jamaratul uh, Kubra, right? The biggest jamarat is it's pelted on this day. I repeat, from Muzdalifa, you have picked your pebbles, you go to Mina, at Mina, you wait, after Zawal, then you go to go and pelt, pelt your uh, jamarat. You'll get, second thing, you'll get a notification that your Uthiyah is now, is done. At that time, you are, you can be out of your Ihram. Okay? This is known as a Tahallul Sughra. You change your clothes. What time do you change your clothes? After you have pelted the Jamarat, you came back, the Jamarat, the one Jamarat, the biggest one, you come back, and you are informed that your sacrificial animal is being sacrificed. At that time, you can you can change your ihram. Okay, you can apply perfume. Only those two things, but no nikah. Right. Let's go back to uh, the place of pelting. What do we say while pelting? Allahu akbar. Right. You, Allahu akbar. Right. 
So seven times. Repelled, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. When you finish, what do you do? When you finish, what do you do? Do you make dua or you don't make dua on the first day? Do you make dua? You don't make dua on the first day, okay? You felt and then, then you go back. So if you look at the slide here, can you change the slide, brother? Yeah, I'm going to see. It's working with your hands now, mashallah. So you make sure that you pelt only the biggest one on this day. The, fir the first one, of course. The first day, you only pelt the first one, the biggest one, and you return back. Okay? When you return back there, you've changed now your clothes, you can ap apply for perfume, then you go to Masjidul Haram. You go to Masjidul Haram. So on this day, this is what we mean by a very important day, a very tiring day. You've just camped from Muzdalifa, you came back to Mina, okay? Then you went and pelted the Jamara, you came back to the tents, now you're any more sacrificed. Now the same day you have to go to Masjid al-Haram and perform your Tawaf al-Ifadah. Tawaf al-Ifadah. After Tawaf al-Ifadah, you go and make Sa'i. See how tiring it is? You go and make Sa'i. Okay. Sometimes it might take up to maybe past midnight. Yeah, so almost like an entire day or maybe uh, longer as well. So this is a little bit confusing day. I pelted my seven Jamarat, I came back, I've been informed, my old hair is sacrificed, I can change my clothes. If you change your clothes before, then you're in trouble, okay? You can apply for perfume, but you need to make sure that your sacrificial animal is being sacrificed. Immediately, you can't go there by yourself. It's better if you go in a group, they will provide buses, and you go there and make your Tawafali Fadha and your Sa'i. Okay? Is there any shaving after that? No, the shaving was done in the morning. The shaving was done in the morning, wasn't it? After your animal was sacrificed, that's when you shave your head. Okay? So, let's repeat again. On the 10th of the... the uh, the Hijjah, the day of Eid, Yawm nahar you go and pelt, you come back from Muzdalifa, then you go and pelt seven uh, takbir after each pelting, then you get back to Mina, then you wait until the sacrificial animal is done. Once your sacrificial animal is done, you shave your hair, we forgot that point, uh, pardon me, you shave your hair, shaving hair means that now you're out of the instead of the haram. Now you can wear your normal clothes, you can apply perfume, except for nikah. Okay? So then you go back to haram and make dua for the father and say, after that, you can now, uh, everything that was prohibited for you becomes lawful. There's no shaving after that. No, yes. Only at the time of Umrah, you shaved, and once your sacrificial animal is done, that's when you shave. Okay? Sorry? Yes, you shave again. You shave again. You have to shave again. Okay? Do you shave before the uh, sacrifice animal sacrifice? Not before. Uh, if you do, there will be a penalty if you do that. Again. There will be a penalty of, yes, you have to give an animal. Uh, that's right. Okay. So, uh, do you want me to repeat? Yes. Yeah. So, on the 10th of the Hijjah, you leave Muzdalifa, going back to Mina. When you arrive at Mina, you will then go and pelt the big Jamara. The big Jamara. After that, you come back to Mina and wait for your notification. After the notification that your animal has been sacrificed, 
then you shave, then you're out of a haram, partial uh, leaving a haram, not fully, okay? Meaning that you can apply for perfume and wear your normal clothes, and from there, you go and perform your tawful ifadah and make sa'i, okay? Then you are fully out of ihram. Done? So where do you go after that? You go back to Mina. Excellent. Let's go back to Mina now. Yes, we're going back to Mina after our tawful ifada and after Sa'id. So you go back to Mina. You you go past the hotels like, oh man, maybe I should just go to the hotel. There are some people that do that, but the sunnah is to go back there. Okay? فَمَنْ تَعَجَّلَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ وَمَنْ تَأَخَّرَ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ لِمَنِ اتَّقَى So when you go back to Mina, you either spend two days, or three additional days. So, are we on the 10th day now or the 11th day? 11th. 11th day, correct? So, on the 11th day, all you're going to do is, you're out of the haram, mashallah, but you're still at the 10th of, of Mina. You will be shortening the prayers there. No, not combining, shortening. And then your talbiyah will continue. Now, on the 11th day, you will leave Mina after Zawad, meaning after Duhar. You go back to where? To, the, to pelting the Jamarat. Okay? And you do all of them in sequence. First one. Now, let's understand this very carefully. You pelt the first one, first Jamarat, the biggest one, seven. Okay? Takbira with every pelting. After that, after that, you make Dua. Face the Qibla and make dua. You pelt the second one. Okay? And then you pelt then also dua after that. After the second one, there is dua. Then you pelt the third one. After the third one, there's no dua, you go back. Is that clear? You pelt the first one, dua. The first day, did you make dua? No. The second day, you pelt it, you made dua. With the second, the middle one, al-wusta, jamarat al-wusta, you pelt it, you made dua. After pelting the third one, there's no dua, you go back. You'll do the same thing on the third day. Okay? This is the twelfth day of now. Dhul-Hijjah. Are we on the same page? We're done the eleventh day, correct? We're almost done now, mashallah. Brother, can we go to the eleventh day? The Hadi and the Biha is done, right? Uh, okay. Maybe give to uh, Adam, if we can bother you. Do you want to take the mouse down? I mean, the keyboard downstairs. It should be working from there. Maybe the um, uh, Bluetooth is not working properly. Okay. So we're on the 11th day at the moment. Wait for Adam to change the slide. Uh, yes. Okay. Wait, 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 go back to that slide. Eleven day. Okay. So they, you see the eleventh day. What time do you go to? Uh, okay, this, yeah, this one, yeah, yeah. The eleventh day, make not. You start pelting after the no 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 it's a bit hot yeah it's a bit hot but it's more rewarding um, so you pelt after pelting the first one do a second one do a third one no do you come back you come back to the to the tents we don't uh, speak about some of the that gives concession and all those things but we go with the original of two days. On the 12th day, you go back, exactly the same thing that you did. You leave your tent, go back to Jamarat, do uh, the biggest one, the middle, after the biggest one, dua, the middle one, dua, then the third one, no dua, then come back to you, come back to your tent. On that day, you may leave, but if you want to leave, 
it should you should live after Asr. Okay? On the second day of Eid, which is the 12th day, correct? After Asr, you can leave and go back to your hotel. Now I want more reward. You can stay the you know additional night. On the 13th day, you go back, pelt again on the 13th day. After Asr, that's when you can pack up. So those who opt, who choose to have an additional day, they can. And if they want to leave, they should leave only after Asr prayer on the 13th day. Uh, can we go to the 13th day you are on? Okay. Most majority of people live on the uh, second day, but there are others as well that stay there uh, on the third. The Prophet Sallallahu stayed all three days. Uh, so in that manner, you have completed your Hajj. What is left? Tawaf al right? Farewell, Tawaf. When do you do the farewell, Tawaf? You do it the last day when you're leaving. Okay. So if you're flying at whatever time, uh, let's assume 4 a.m., then Isha, you go and perform your final Tawaf, which is known as do you need to wear your haram? No, you don't need to wear your haram for that. So, alhamdulillah, this now completes your hajj. MashaAllah, haji. Uh, Why did you forget your prayer? Were you too organized? Yeah, 70, you need 70. 10, you need additional, even more. Even if you do 100, is better. Sorry. I did my calculation, unless maybe uh, <laughs> I think yeah. Yeah, correct. But look, uh, sometimes you miss. Some sometimes you you lose the stones. Sometimes they can you know slip out of your hands. So you need to carry additional ones. Okay, let's go to the questions quickly, inshallah. Any questions? No questions, mashallah. No, sisters, you can, sorry. Sisters, you can send your questions in the group. Uh, let's start with the brother at the back. Yes, we can give him the mic, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Yes. Uh, um, basically, um, I'm trying to name my dad. We're, we're going to be together. Right? We just come up to the past. I'm going to be together. Yes. Uh, so, what I wanted to know is the difference between all the same as the Because what I mean is, someone left your spouse for the same man. Um, in terms of I joined my spouse. Because I'm not sure. I don't know whether or not the person is going to accept it. Well, yes. So your, your question is if there is a female guy. Look, uh, I've, I've seen somewhere saying female guys and all those things, which is it's 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 good. Uh, but we actually, inshallah, will use the WhatsApp group, so the sisters can always reach us out. They'll have uh, you know direct number there, of course. And also, when we're going for Umrah and, and Hajj and all those things, we'll be together as well, inshallah. So uh, there's not much stress in terms of um, doing collective or performing the Ibadah collectively and things like that. Um, and yeah, so if we're going to Arafah, for example, we're going to be together, okay? In one bus? In one bus. Uh, if you're going to uh, Muzdalifa, you're going back to Mina. Going to Mina will be, it's a walking distance. And normally we walk as a group. So we, we agree on the time, like what time are we going to go? Then we, we all say, okay, we're going to go uh, uh, to Pelt the Jamarat at this time. So we all leave, we wait for each other, then we leave. And the sisters are behind us and we are in front of, of the sisters as well. Uh, so normally this is what happens. Uh, so don't worry about that, inshallah. Uh, let's go to the second question. Yes, Habibi. Uh, I think that's brother had the second question. Sorry. Uh, the 
I was talking about the after press of human finish is going to take five. Sorry, sorry, do you, do you want to repeat that? Uh, once we finish Umrah, press five. Uh, on that day, we go in that hotel, can we take a bus? Yes. And we Taking a bus? No, no restriction, anything like uh, we use the stove, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. When you arrive in Makkah, when you arrive in Makkah, it's sunnah to refresh. Yes. Okay. And after Umrah, there's nothing to worry. You no. are out of the haram anyway. Okay. Mm. Any other questions? Any questions from the sister in the group? Okay, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. No, sir. Um, the question was asked in the presentation. Um, during the head, after Umrah, you know, you go straight into Umrah, then after two days, we do Hajj. So we shave, I mean, on Umrah or in Hajj, which, what's preferable? We should still the pray uh, head on the Umrah after completion of Umrah and save the shaving for the Hajj. So what is recommended and what do you suggest? Mm -hmm. So if you are doing Hajj Tamattu, then you have to uh, follow the procedure of, of shaving your hair twice, okay? If you're doing Hajj Quran, it's different. So after you, otherwise, you can choose not to shave your hair, but you'll be in a state of Ihram. No, we can trim it. Oh, you mean trimming? Yeah, trimming, yeah, um. trimming, yeah. Because yeah. I want to save. Everything. No, you don't need, to, uh, look. Uh, That's what I'm saying. I get your point. So you're worried about... After Hajj, I'll shave. Yeah. So that's my... So whatever comes out, uh, even if small strands of hair come out, you, it's, it's considered as a shaving as well. So, like, for example, people go for Umrah and they want to, you know, do multiple Umrahs, even though it's not encouraged unless if you're making on behalf of a diseased and then you have two days or three days there. How are you going to shave? So whatever comes out of your uh, your head, that should be uh, that should be yeah, acceptable, inshallah. Um, I I would prefer shaving because this is what the Prophet sallallahu did, and he made you know double duas for the person who shaves. Uh, I hope I've answered your question, brother. Any other questions? Okay, we have time for that. Uh, four questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, what vaccination uh, do we have taken on sleeping bags? Vaccination? Vaccination. Vaccination, okay. Okay, vaccination. Uh, sleeping bags? Sleeping bags. Uh, the girls who cannot pray? Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. Well. Yes. And um, uh, yeah. Okay, we'll come to the three. V vaccines? MashaAllah, uh, you can go take a fourth jab now, unless if you want to. I'm not taking it now. Uh, I had quite a lot of them. Uh, look, what they're saying that uh, you're, if you haven't taken your uh, vaccines in the past, then you should at least have your uh, meningococcal or something, meningitis, right? Uh, that you should have. Uh, even though it's recommended, but it's it's highly recommended. So if you're coming from Australia, it's highly recommended. It's not mandatory. Okay? They won't cancel your visa because you didn't take you didn't take the meningitis vaccine. Um, should you have the COVID nineteen is not is not mandatory as well. And they're not they're not emphasizing it. Um, unlike uh, just after COVID. So alhamdulillah, if you have your visa you have your visa. Uh, in the past, if you were going for Hajj or Umrah, they would first ask you to prove that you were vaccinated first. Uh, that's number one. Secondly, sleeping bag. So you go to your package. In your package, it states what will the provider give you. So a haram will be given, bus shuttle will be given, A, B, C, D will be given. So go just have a look at what is included in your package. If Sleeping bag is not included, then you should have one, obviously. Uh, regarding your sisters that experience um, the monthly uh, circles, then at that time, you know, even our mother Aisha Radullah did go through the same experience, and she she was 
you know, asked to stay in, you know, Masjid Aisha, as you all know, that's where um, uh, she experienced the, you know, a, um, all these experiences. At that time, a sister or a female is ex not excused, but she's not allowed to perform her umrah at that time. Okay? Until she's clean. Until she is, she is clean. Does the same apply with Hajj? The answer is yes. Okay, what I've seen some sisters doing is they, uh, um, the sisters know better than me. They speak to the doctors and the doctors tell them what to do. Uh, that's all I can say, but I'm not encouraging anything. It's, uh, it's something that is left to the doctors and uh, left on, on the individuals. But as, not, as far as a uh, um, juristic point of view is concerned, at that time, they are not allowed to perform the Hajj, neither the Umrah, until they are clean. And once they're clean, then they can go and perform the, uh, the Umrah. Okay, on Hajj day, on Hajj day, because your Hajj is starting from uh, Mina anyway, right? The Hajj is starting from Mina. The sister can go enter in the state of Ihram and go to Mina. Okay, on the day of Arafah, she can still go to Arafah. Okay, on the day uh, at Muzdalifah, the sister can still go to Muzdalifah in that state. What the sister cannot do is going to make her tawaful, her tawaf, uh, will be delayed. Tawaf al father will be delayed until she is clean. So if she makes her uh, Arafah, that means the Hajj is, Hajj inshallah is accepted, and she can delay. You may delay your Tawaf uh, al father if there is a reason. So the jurists have given that concession. So just to summarize, for the benefit of our sisters, if you go there, you have performed your Umrah, but you find that you are now excused from prayers during the time of Hajj. Enter in the state of Ihram, go to Mina, go to Arafah, go to Muzdalifah. But on the day of, of Eid, you can go and fill the Jamarat and everything. The only thing that you will delay is your is your Tawaf al and your Sai. Once the sisters are clean, they can go and do that, and the Hajj is completed, inshallah. Any other questions? I hope I've answered. Yes. 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 Yeah, correct. Correct. So you leave it, you leave it right. The brother is asking, when do you do Tawaf al father if you're there an additional two weeks, three weeks, even if you're there for a month or two, your final farewell Tawaf is always left towards the end. Right. Any other question? There's a question around? Yeah. On what date can you leave Makkah? On what date? Uh, on what day can you leave Makkah? Uh, after, after the day of Eid, you can leave. You leave Makkah or they quote. So after, on the day of Eid, you're going back to Mina, right? After Mina, you're spending two days or three days. I did, maybe majority of people spend two days. After that, you can leave. You can yeah. After that, you can leave and go back. Yes, you can leave the country, all of it together. Any other questions? Uh, sir, sir, uh, just one practical question. So you said uh, that people will be informed about their hadith. Yes. Uh, how will that be done? I'll share, inshallah, good, good question. I'll share a uh, link where you can book your hadith. Uh, and then you can book it. I don't think it's open now, but they will start, they'll start taking bookings. So, inshallah, we'll share the link. Uh, just remind me in the group, inshallah, in the next few days I should share. Maybe by uh, Tuesday I should send the link. And you just keep on checking if they've started taking orders. You can, because the providers are not, are not doing the hadith for you. Okay, so Rawaf is not doing, I don't know about other providers, but uh, at least Rawaf is not doing hadith, so you have to make your own booking. Uh, there are other means, but you just want to secure that. So, inshallah, you do it online. And then they will communicate with you as well. And, uh, email, local phone, WhatsApp, they will, they're quite advanced, mashallah. Uh, the, yes, the, the hadith. Any other questions? So the pizzas are getting cold. <laughs>
Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, three good things. One, you can use our help and it would be a very, very nice help for us to save you. Mm. Can you perform everything in your hand with the edge? Do you have to end up <coughs> uh, you have to go to detail to do it? Yes, that's correct. So, uh, after Hajj, if you want to make additional Umrah on behalf of deceased family members, you can. You go to Miqat, Masjid Aisha is one of them. Close, it's about 20 25 minutes away from Mecca, uh, from your hotel, probably. And then, yes, you, you follow the same procedure. Any other questions? Yeah, one last question. Yes. Um, we got confused. Um, we got confused regarding the number of pebbles. Can we run through how many pebbles? So we just for the different numbers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm not say how many we need. I recall when I uh, I normally take 80s. Uh, I normally take 80s, and that ha helped me. Sometimes a brother misses, and I can give him uh, extra. And sometimes yours, your yours will go missing as well. Things like that. 80 to be precise. Yeah. Okay. How many we are using? Seven. 70. From my calculation, it's 70. Oh, there was, can anyone confirm that there is a problem with the Zoom? Is the Zoom viewable? It's working, yeah? Okay, I'm just, I'm just waiting. Okay. Any other questions, inshallah, or else we conclude the session? Okay. Yes, okay. Zakullah khair. Habibi al-Khair. Let's have our that now. Let's have our that, yeah, it was that. Uh, Brother Fawad, can you help us to get pens at the office, please? Uh, yes. Brother Fawad, did you give assistance? What's this for? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if we can get someone to show us how to wear ihram. Okay. Just follow the prompts. Um, I think yeah. one sheet you have every sheet is it's been printed in three different. How many columns do you have? Uh, yeah, we, we had a problem with that. So, so this I think for group like sort of thing. Like so, single name. Yeah. Father, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sheet, I'll sort that. it out. Just need your name, gender, uh, package start date. So there are four pages sort of. Yes, four pages in total. Oh, is it? Yeah. Four pages in total, right? Yeah, four pages. Uh, four pages in total. Yeah. I've got three here. Name, gender. Yeah, yeah. So if we, maybe we need a pen for the sisters also. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, sure. Okay, while we're feeling this, so this is, we just want to understand who's leaving when. I know there was, there's something that you people done on the, uh, one on, on the the live document that we sent, but that is going to the provider. So just make it a bit easy and get in this because that will be a lot of work for you to add it will be four pages to a person. So we read them. Uh, it should be okay. It should be okay. So person, we can do yeah. per, no, per, per, per um, no, 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 so it has one, two, right? Yeah, yeah just yeah. Okay. Okay, who can show us how to wear ihram? Who are the brothers are? Well, we don't have what? the... Uh, what? 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 What?
forgot my one. Okay. But when is it starting? When are you landing? Your ticket should say. Can you check on your ticket, please? No, like that. Brother, what are you doing? You have to take it easy. I'm not. Yeah, good. Take it to ideal. Take it to ideal. Inshallah, can do it. Don't do it. Okay. Uh, so, if, brothers, if you want to see how to wear your haram. <coughs> okay. So, make sure these two. Uh, ending are squared. Okay, they has they have to be parallel to each other. Number one, then you hold here. Bring it in front. Number two, number three, you fold in between, and then here you start folding. Okay. And this, this is, mashallah, can't, can't, it can't fall down. You can use a belt as well. Yeah. You had pin mentioned in can use a pin as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, have you seen what I did? Yes. The one end, normally I leave my left longer than the right one. The right will be short. Then I'm bringing it under my armpit. Okay, here I'm tucking it under. Okay, and this will just come. So what happened? My right arm exposed or not? Yes. Yes. And this is what we do when we're doing the first three. three. Okay. So the trick is, the tip is you do this at the hotel before going to Masjid Haram because you are, I'll do it when I get there, you forget, right? And once you finish with the three, then you bring this up, okay? Bring this up, always, this is shorter than the left. Pipe it in, and there you go, you your arm is now covered, right? Yeah, uh, inshallah, maybe if we can complete this form. So what we'll do with these forms is we just want to understand who's arriving when. So uh, if you need the like group flights, for example, from here you want to travel with a group, we can pay you up, inshallah. Those of you that have taken custom flights as well, uh, if we know when you're leaving, we could pay you with, with someone so I can text you and tell you, look, there are these people that are leaving on the same day, you can travel with them. Anyone wants to try? Brother, I think you, you'd be good to try. Maybe whoever filled this one needs to fill that page. Shall we be booking the ticket? Yes, yeah, so once we know this, inshallah, uh, okay. we can do it this week. My dad has a problem. He not speak English other than my language. Mm. Is the group provider will do like a group thing happening? Or there is an app, uh, Google Translator. Yeah. Download that. Then Does it have our language? No, it should have. No. No, you speak, don't you speak Turkish? No, no, he not speak the Uyghur, he's not. Who is it? Yeah? You speak Russian? No. Any other language? No. Languages? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we are China to go, uh, so they forced to learn Chinese, but he never learned at all. Maybe the IT can, <laughs> <laughs> can do something. No, there should be some uh, apps to translate. There should be. Language. There, there should, should be. be. I'll, I'll search Uyghur language. Yeah. Uyghur, yeah. Yeah. Uyghur. Yeah. I'll see, inshallah. Yeah. There yeah. should be something, yeah. 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 Uyghur language. Last time I checked 